I've been hearing a lot of whispers around town about cortisol. So today I'm going to tell you what it is, why you should care about it if your goal is to build muscle mass and tone, and most importantly, tips on how you can control the amount of it in your body. So check it. Greetings. It is I, Maximus, your gym philosopher. And on this channel, we give advice on weight training, nutrition, supplements, and a variety of subjects regarding health and fitness, all from a philosophical mindset. During the course of this video, if I cite any references or links, they will most likely be below this video in the description section. So, just hanging out here at the Lyceum with my gym bro, Socrates. Send a shout out, Socrates. Hey bros, crush your workout today. Okay, the topic of today's show is cortisol. Max, what is cortisol? Cortisol is classified as a steroid hormone. Now, before you get the wrong idea there, steroid simply refers to the specific four ring structure of the molecule. So it breaks down like this. There are two categories of steroid hormone. There are the sex hormones, such as testosterone and estradiol, and then there are the corticosteroids, such as cortisone, cortisol, aldosterone, and a couple others. All natural steroid hormones are derived from cholesterol, which also has that four ring molecular structure. Hey Max, where is cortisol made? I'm getting to that. Okay, let's talk about where cortisol is made. Cortisol is produced in the human body by the adrenal cortex portion of the adrenal glands. Now the adrenal glands are triangle shaped glands that sit on top of each of your kidneys like a hat. Cortisol release is controlled by a portion of the brain called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus triggers the neighboring pituitary gland to release a hormone into the bloodstream that then triggers the adrenal glands to start pumping out them hormones. During times of emotional or physical stress, more cortisol is released in response. This is why cortisol is typically referred to as the stress hormone. Typical emotional stressors are things like job stress, uh, relationship woes, financial troubles, planning a major event, um, or other traumatic experience. Being forced to drink hemlock? Yep, poisoning for sure. Typical physical stressors are things such as physically demanding jobs, overtraining in the gym, uh, injury, sickness, uh, allergies, um, exposure to extreme hot temperature or extreme cold temperature, or when you're hungry due to, due to your low blood glucose levels during periods of fasting. Note to anybody doing intermittent fasting, you should take this into account. Hey Socrates, are you still doing IF? No bro, I'm just carb cycling. Gotcha. Now I know what you're thinking. Max, buddy, this is all real interesting scientific stuff you're telling us here. But what does it concern me? I'm a weightlifter. I'm a bodybuilder. I'm a fitness enthusiast. I'm a crossfitter. Why should I care about cortisol? I'll tell you why. Because cortisol and other corticosteroids are catabolic. Catabolism is a muscle destroying metabolic process as opposed to anabolism, which is a muscle building metabolic process. So it goes like this. When cortisol is secreted for a prolonged period, it begins a process called proteolysis. Ah, proteolysis. This process breaks down muscle proteins into amino acids, eventually for use as energy in the body. Muscle tissue loss is definitely not a desired result for anybody who's beating themselves up in the gym. In addition to that, cortisol also inhibits protein synthesis by decreasing amino acid uptake into the muscle. So you're losing muscle, and at the same time, you're not building any new muscle to replace that. It's a double whammy, baby. As far as fat loss goes, cortisol does seem to increase fat loss in the whole body. But excessive cortisol in the body can lead to a condition called Cushing syndrome. Now, one of the characteristics of Cushing syndrome is that it inhibits fat breakdown in the abdomen. 
which leads to a big fat belly. I've included some links in the description uh, to a few studies that uh, deal with uh, cortisol's effect on fat loss in the body in case anyone's interested. And you'll check this out. Cortisol also has deleterious effects on the immune system. So this lengthens the time that your body can recover from an epic workout. And if you sustain an injury, it takes longer to heal from that injury before you get back in the gym and start tossing them iron cookies. And lastly, it decreases bone formation. And that ain't good. So you tell me, for anyone whose goal is to build muscle and lose fat, do you think cortisol is important? Max, is there anything good about cortisol? Actually, yes. There are some benefits to cortisol or corticosteroids. In what cases is it good for you? First off, cortisol is an anti-inflammatory and prevents immune system response that causes inflammation in the body. Normally, suppressing your immune system is a bad thing. But for people with certain allergic reactions to things, spot treatment can be very beneficial. Topicals like hydrocortisone are used on skin to treat bug bites or an allergic reaction to something like poison ivy. And for more serious allergic reactions, like peanut allergies or bee stings, a common quick treatment is an injection of epinephrine. Epinephrine, or commonly known as adrenaline, is also produced by the adrenal glands and acts similar to cortisol. Often cortisone is injected into people's bodies in order to reduce the pain caused by the inflammation due to certain medical conditions. Those painful medical conditions are things such as arthritis in the joints, bursitis, or carpal tunnel syndrome. You probably know somebody who gets regular cortisone injections into their knuckles or their neck or their hip for relief of pain and swelling. Cortisol also helps you deal with stressful situations. Yeah, I know, we mentioned that already, but that was in a negative connotation. When you're confronted with, let's say, a wild, ferocious animal, or a mugger, or any other threat to your body, the adrenaline and cortisol give your mind and body the necessary energy for survival. It's flight or flight response, baby! I mean, we all know that old children's tale about the little old lady who summoned the strength and energy to lift that heavy submarine off of the baby koala as the story goes. With that said, excessive cortisol production in the body is generally undesirable. You have to remember that with all things, there are costs and benefits that one must contemplate. Pay no attention to the beard. Do not look at the beard. So, here we are, that point in the video that you were laboring to get to, where I tell you, I tell you how to lower your cortisol levels. Tips on that now, just the tips. Tip one, take vitamin C, there. Studies have shown that consumption of vitamin C reduces serum cortisol levels significantly in both athletes and those experiencing psychological stress. Links to those studies below in the description. Rich sources of vitamin C are things such as pineapple, guava fruit, oranges, grapefruit, and any citrus in general. Also some vegetables like red pepper, green pepper, and broccoli. Broccoli? Yep, broccoli. Now personally, I don't like taking all that sugar. So what I do is I take one of these each day. It's a thousand milligram pill of vitamin C. And I generally take it after I get home um, from a tough workout. Now on workout days, the timing is important because just after you smash it up in the gym, your body will be apt to produce a lot of cortisol to combat the physical stress that it just endured. So I try and narrow the window between when the cortisol production begins and when I can combat that with the vitamin C. Yep. Cool. You can reduce or eliminate your caffeine intake. Ugh. Yeah, I know, that's pretty brutal. 
especially to those of us who enjoy a hot cup of joe. But don't go crying into your non-dairy creamer just yet, fellas. Uh, I've linked an interesting study below in the description that found that cortisol response to caffeine is reduced but not eliminated in healthy young men and women who consume caffeine on a daily basis. So what the study was basically saying is that you can build up a tolerance to caffeine if you drink it every day in mass quantities uh, and then that would not affect your cortisol levels if you built up that tolerance to caffeine. So go for it. Chip three. Supplements. Seems like there's a supplement for everything out there. And there are various supplements on the market that purport to lower your cortisol levels. Products like gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA, make this claim. Now, I've never taken GABA, so I'm not going to tell you if I think it works or not. You're going to have to do that for yourself. But just remember that there are a lot of shady characters in the supplement industry. It's not regulated very heavily. So do your research. You know, even if you do try something out, make sure that it's from a good brand and also check the price a little bit too. You can get some stuff on uh, Amazon for pretty cheap if you know uh, a good brand and you see a lot of good recommendations for it. Tip four. Don't go hungry for too long or fast. Eating meals frequently will help keep your body out of a catabolic state. A common schedule for bodybuilders is to eat every two to three to four hours. Now, it doesn't need to be full meals, just as long as you get something relatively healthy into your system to digest. Something like uh, protein bars or a protein shake or even a banana. No cookies or candy. Hit five. And lastly, would I, the gym philosopher, feel is the most effective and important tool to combat stress, which raises your cortisol levels the most? It's meditation. Yeah, I know for us macho guys, that sounds like a bunch of woo woo kind of silly crap, but you're never gonna succeed physically unless you succeed mentally. Remember that. Out of all the contributors to elevated cortisol levels that I talked about, normal daily stress is the biggest factor because it stays with you all day long. You know, being hungry is only going to last until you have your next meal. Drinking coffee, the caffeine enters your system and it leaves your system a relatively quick amount of time. But chronic depression and constantly worrying about things is a waking problem. Now, there are a lot of meditation phone apps out there in the market, but this is the guy that I use. It's called MHK and it's free on the Google Play Store or iTunes. It's a good meditation app. In fact, it's not just good, it's gooder. And what's even better than gooder about it is that it doesn't contain any adware. But seriously, it has exercises on breathing, pain management, and just overall relaxation. So check it out. And uh, feel free to explore in your own any meditation apps. And if you come across any noteworthy ones, then you can let me know in the comments or my email or Twitter, or Skywrite it, whatever you wanna do. And that's all I got on cortisol, folks, for now. You got anything else, Socrates? Uh, yes, uh, know thyself. Word. If you like this video, hit subscribe, hit like, share, comment, go make yourself a smoothie. And if you didn't like this video, then you're probably not watching this right now, so Hope to have you back in the future. We got plenty of topics that are great about gym philosophy. Yes, and don't forget getting swole and smashing it up in the gym. Peace. So that's it for today. Go contemplate and reflect on what I've said to you today. And remember, now you know something.